for the weekend because he knew that it was going to be very, very complicated. Come, no, it wasn't. They'd already decided. <laughs> Judge, we don't need the weekend off. We don't need it. We can convict them right now. <laughs> Live on digital media from the vast and spacious VPod TV studios in beautiful Oak Brook, Illinois. Filling the gaping hole that Clitfi, oops, I read that wrong, CLTV left when they abandoned Oak Brook years ago. It's the Weekly Wrap with your host, broadcasting legend, Bruce Wolf, and his trusty sidekick, former Liberty Magazine editor and Breitbart contributor, Tim Slagle. This week's very special guest, Arizona rep, knower of all things election fraud, Mark Fincham. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Bruce Wolf. Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. <laughs> that hurts, so it must be genuine. You know, that intro that our great staff announcer was doing reminded me, because he uh, made a reference there to uh, CLTV, which is non-existent, I guess, so, but it used to be that it was one of the first cable news networks, local ones uh-huh. in Chicago. And uh, years ago, I worked uh, with Steve Dahl. I was his partner, and we had Amy Stone, uh, the beautiful and talented Amy Stone, who later went on to work for Channel 5 and then worked in New York. And uh, she was a sports reporter. She was our sports reporter. And she was working for CLTV at the time. And of course, I was a shock jock, at the, or a budding shock jock. So I, would, I <laughs> said to her, uh, you know, Amy, we have the shorthand ways in uh, broadcasting in Chicago of referring to various stations like WBBM we call Wibubum, uh, WMAQ we call WIMAC, WLS we call Willis. Do you know, Amy, what we call CLTV? And she said, CLTV. And that's why she, <laughs> her career wasn't aborted like mine has been so many times. So yeah, without further ado, uh, yeah, I had a, Tim, I had an idea. Uh, you know, when I saw that uh, Caitlyn Jenner what, had come out against a uh, females, uh, transgenders in the Olympics. Sure. I thought that this is, and she's good, she's running for governor in California, but I, I think she should hopscotch right over that, and she should be the vice president, vice, pres- vice presidential nominee for Tim Scott. What do you think of that? I think that would be uh, uh, intersectionally perfect. Yes. <laughs> there is no absolutely. way. Absolutely. There is no way anyone could criticize you anyone. Have to, it's, it, it would be like the Eisenhower of this generation. <laughs> Everybody wanted Ike. Uh, he just went with the Republicans. As Russell Kirk said when Eisenhower was accused of being a communist, he said, no, he's a golfer. So, uh, but uh, yeah, so that's, I, that's what I like. Now, coming up in the next segment... I'm already teasing the next segment, but we have Congressman uh, Mark Fincham, who is in Arizona, where they're having uh, what I I referred to before the show as like the third recount. And I was corrected by our producer, Chris, who said, no, this is the two before the two before were recounts. I had called them audits. So these are these are this is really the first audit. I right. guess. I, I, I'm not sure what the difference is between an audit and a recount. I guess a recount is counting the same ballots over and over again so you get the same result, which is the definition of insanity. But, uh, but I, I... An audit, I, in an audit you yeah. make sure that the in ballots business, weren't zero. It's never just another day. Yeah, the, uh, right, supposedly. But we're getting into things like whether there was bamboo traces uh, found on the ballots because there was a Chinese conspiracy. Now I understand that's supposedly a red herring, which uh, which I like to get you know. Yeah, with but if my Chinese no, food yeah, order but if, but if, they, if they use bamboo free paper for the ballots, the mail in ballots, and there's bamboo in the ballots. I mean that would that would indicate that those ballots came from somewhere well, else. The, the the main th- you have to find the bamboo. That's the thing. Is there is there bamboo in the ballots? And that, 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 Chris was saying beforehand, that's just somebody, some, something somebody threw down at the a- end of the list and everybody has latched onto it. But there's other things like were the ballots folded or not. But a lot of ballots, mail-in ballots, aren't folded. I think, you know, uh, what, what's, go- what's going to happen? Uh, that's a good question. Big envelopes, I guess. <laughs> the really big Titanic <laughs> envelopes. I think, I think that uh, at the end of the day, it'll, it'll, nobody will be satisfied. We will have to, you know, Juvenile said, who will watch the watcher? So now we've got the who uh, will audit the auditors uh, of the auditors, because that's how meta this is becoming right now. I mean, I'm not an expert on auditing. I'm not sure that our congressman guest in the next segment is either, because he's got to be, he's a congressman, he's a politician. But 
Uh, I know that you guys in here are all against me on this because I'm a I'm a <laughs> I'm a rhino supposedly who voted for Trump twice. That's the definition of a rhino. <laughs> but if I don't believe that um, Mike Lindell was telling the God's honest truth when he was on Jimmy Kimmel, and by, by the way, you mentioned that his his uh, his appearance on Jimmy Kimmel, and uh, and he, you said he had acquitted himself well. He, you're right. He actually came off amazingly. as amazingly. Yeah, he came off as a, well. I'm glad you said amazing because, Ama- he, because oh, no. when I, I think of I think of him as kind of a nutcase who was yeah. calling for the overthrow of the government and saying that uh, Dominion had uh, conspired to uh, to uh, overthrow the government as well. Uh, because Hugo Chavez had, had decided that he wanted the embargo <laughs> to end or something, but the um, he he Kimmel likes him, so he he turned out to be pretty good and likable. And then they had a, a Mike Lindell imitator on at the end who was very funny, and Lindell was laughing at himself, so he was yeah. self-effacing. His to look at his case in the uh, the best possible light, though, it's that he got some information from some guy who says that those Dominion machines were rigged, and he'd like Dominion to open up those machines. So, but that doesn't mean he's really got anything, but at least it makes him sound like a, not like a total nutcase. Now, I admit I'm biased against Mike Lindell because I was in radio for years, and I had to read more My Pillow commercials than <laughs> any, but I wanted to stuff my face in a My Pillow pillow. I mean, I still can tell you that you could get two any, uh, anywhere you want to go pillows right now, well, now for the he's price selling, of one. Now he's selling flippers. I don't know if you've the what? most comfortable flippers that you've ever <laughs> really. That's what he calls them, flippers. Flippers, <laughs> flippers. It's, it, it, it's, this is not a Sylvester the Cat <laughs> thing. That's what it sounds is, like. I taught, I taught. My uh, pillow, my flippers, my flippers. <laughs> okay. it, you know what? It'll make the uh, make the lisping uh, th- those with lisps. Uh, not feel so bad because they'll be correctly pronouncing it. So when you did radio, you had to do those spots where it's like, oh, last night I slept on my pillow. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I have jazz to tell up. you. Yeah. I have to tell you, I, I got right. such a good, you had to do a. Right. Did you ever sleep on one? You know, we really? actually did get them. And I honestly can't tell you the difference because I don't remember. Yeah. You know, in my dotage, I don't have short term memory anymore. So I don't remember. You know, ask me who number 21 was on the 62 Blackhawks. I'll tell you, it's Stan Mikita. But I can't tell you <laughs> what, uh, whether that my pillow was better. I, I assume that it is better. I'm sure it's fine. I, um, I, was, I was so disappointed because they said, they were saying that, uh, that, that you, never have to, you never have to flip it because it uh, always stays cool. It's cool on both sides of the pillow, as yeah. Stuart Scott no. used to say at ESPN. I think the, I think the per, first person that figures out a way to make a pillow that stays cool without right. flipping it. Will be a will be a billionaire. Oh, to stay cool. Oh, that is a great. I think, I think uh, Paul Popeil is uh, <laughs> turning over in his grave right now. Why didn't I think of that? Uh, what's his name? Paul. I'm just Ron, making that up. Ron. Ron Popeil. Paul Popeil. I'm I'm conflating him with Paul Popovich, who was the second baseman for the Cubs. Or maybe Paul 70s. Paul. Or one, whichever Paul you want. Uh, well, it goes better. It's an alliteration. Ron Popeil. I mean, it may as well right. be Fred Popeil. Sure. Yeah. But, uh, it was also Ronco. Ronco and Popeil. Yeah. Oh, so you fell for a lot of those things, too. Kitchen magician, a Ginzu knife set. <laughs> You're up late at night. I think yeah, I'm going uh, to buy the Jane Fonda workout never, right now. I never bought any of it, but yeah, I was up late at night. So Do you know, over. I mean, Jane Fonda. I mean, she she uh, bamboozled us. It's hard. She, well, I think it was her payback because she was bamboozled by the Viet Cong. She, they they marched her around some Potemkin check, village or check whatever. Her for, should check her for bamboo splinters. There you go. And she excuse me. So she um, so she got uh, her vengeance upon American society with the Jane Fonda workout, which everybody I was doing it. The Jane Fonda it's like yeah. stepping and and are you ready to do the workout? Yeah, and because I want to make love to Barbarella, even though she's thirty years past that, and now she's seventy years past it. But it turned out, it turned out that she had work done. She had work. I mean, you can't have work done and say I, I've sculpted this body doing the workout. So, so it should have been the Jane Fonda work done. <laughs> and hi So then, uh, so, and then she marries Ted Turner for a while, and she's doing the tomahawk chop yeah, in I re- Atlanta. I, re- I remember that. And when are we getting rid of the Atlanta Braves and the tomahawk chop? We're getting rid of the Cleveland Indians. We got to get rid of the Blackhawks. 
uh, because you can't pull a guy's sweater over his uh, head and, and pummel him. That's, you know, reinforcing the stereotypes. Uh, you, were, you, were lied to. you were lied to and you were hurt. I can't. I don't really like it when you know they they lead me down the garden path like that at three o'clock in the morning when you're most vulnerable. She's with a Viet Cong. Why would how, why would you have trusted her in the first place? I did. I, I, I trust. You know why? Because she was pretty. Yeah. That's why. Yep. Uh, she was great in nine golden uh, blonder. No, that was the porno. <laughs> that was the porno version. Oh, you, oh boy, I'm conflating a lot of stuff here today. Well, it's because of the open that we had about CLDV that put me in the right frame of mind here. And uh, you know, I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm doing a podcast. You know, you're, you're kind of expected to go right to the edge there. Although everybody does, so it's it's pretty passe, I imagine. All right, so coming up. We will be talking to the congressman, and I wanted to use this segment to do some prep because I'm a little nervous about talking to a U.S. congressman. He he got elected for some reason, and it's probably because he can snow a guy like me, who's just a little old country lawyer. Or tampered with Dominion machines. Tampering. I mean, and, and he's going to cut, and he's... Bamboo ballots. And he believes in the most far-fetched things, and later when this all blows up, they're going to look back at Bruce Wolf and how he just cratered to this <laughs> crazy congressman. And uh, so, I, you know, get ready for me to get whooped here. You better help out here. But you're on the other side. On you the be- other side. You actually believe that Dominion is run by Hugo Chavez, right? No, I, I think there's irregularities in the election. Yeah, but not enough to uh, change the vote count. There's only 13, I don't 000. think so. In Arizona, they call it an audit. Of course, we know that's not what it is. It is an unprecedented, slow-moving, and supremely partisan, like beyond partisan exercise. The backward search for proof to support a conspiracy theory they've already accepted as fact. So far, they've reportedly hand-counted about 500,000 of the 2.1 million ballots cast in Maricopa County. But this weekend, they have to pause, they have to pack everything up and temporarily vacate the stadium they're using because the venue is taken it's hosting high school graduations next week but after those graduations are over the so-called auditors will come back with their boxes looking for bamboo continue their never-ending search for watermarks those bamboo fibers it's a bizarre situation summed up perfectly last night by my colleague rachel maddow what could go wrong i mean that's a totally normal and professional thing to do right Already, the Twitter account for the audit, run by an uncertified, totally inexperienced conspiracy theorist-led bunch of Trump partisans, is claiming that they've uncovered significant discrepancies as they unbox and then rebox the ballots that they will soon unbox again. Oh, you're finding discrepancies. <laughs> what an unexpected turn of events. Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle on the uh, weekly wrap. And uh, actually, Rachel Maddow should be comfortable uh, with conspiracy theories. Uh, she uh, put one forth for about two and a half years called the uh, Russian conspiracy theory. She was even <laughs> taken to task by Eric Wempel, who is the liberal media columnist for The Washington Post. And he ripped her a new um, uh, well, she, partner she, here, I well, guess. Well, she actually uh, had, had uh, Trump's tax returns. Do you remember that? Uh, yes. That was the biggest disappointment well, since right. Al Capone's vault. <laughs> That's right. Geraldo was thinking of switching over to MSNBC, too. <laughs> well, we are joined right now, and uh, we appreciate uh, the State Representative Mark Fincham of Arizona for being on with us. Thanks for coming on the show. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. So uh, do you agree with Nicole Wallace's name-calling here that this is a partisan audit? Actually, I don't even have problems with partisanship. I'm an attorney. We, we understand that the best route to the truth is having partisans on both sides, and the jury decides. What do you think? Yeah, well, I, I, there's a whole bunch of stuff to unpack there. That frankly, the whole thing is a steaming garbage heap of, of uh, a, a television uh, opinion channel that masquerades as a news channel. What I got a real chuckle out of is the whole conspiracy theory thing. They're promoting a conspiracy theory that has already been debunked by the uh, by CISA that we had a fraud-free election. So if you're going to promote that conspiracy theory. And you're not going to give credit to the Democrats who were involved in the Arizona audit program. That tells me that you are so divorced from fact 
that you am now living in fantasy land, girl. Well, here's the thing. I mean, and uh, of course, you're going to call me a rhino here. And I, even though I voted for Trump twice, I really am a man without a, a country <laughs> or a statesman. But uh, I, look, I didn't mind that President Obama, when he started his career, he challenged the signatures of an old black state senator, state representative named Alice Palmer, which was considered not cricket at the time. And he won that challenge. So, yes, by all means, if the Democrats can do it, it's the American way. Challenge the signatures. The question is, is this really a bona fide audit? Uh, you had President Trump the other day saying that the files were deleted. Then you, then you had the Maricopa County uh, treasurer or whatever, a county board member saying, and, and a Republican saying, no, they're right here. And it, so... The problem is, even if we find some fraud, we're, we seem like we're overstating the case. Well, I don't think that that's correct. Um, first of all, let's start with the letter that the Senate sent to the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. And quite frankly, I am very challenged by their behavior. If we go back to December 14th, they said, hey, we want a transparent process. We acknowledge that there is a need for a forensic audit and we'll be cooperative. As soon as they received a subpoena, they lawyered up, and they have been anything but cooperative. In fact, they have fought the Senate every step of the way. And they launched this rather bizarre um, attempt to try and preempt the Senate by doing their own audit, uh, parenthetically. Well, okay, wait a minute. The folks that you had come in to do whatever it was that they did First of all, they weren't EAC certified like you claimed they were, and they weren't auditors. And whatever they did to examine equipment, they're the very people that installed the equipment and then certified it the first time. So last time I checked, there's this thing called um, a, an arm's length transaction. I mean, for example, you say you're a lawyer. If a judge has a relationship with one of the, whether the plaintiff or the respondent, uh, generally, the judge would recuse himself, right? Right. So, well, here here's the thing. The problem is, and you know, uh, I'll even stipulate for the moment certified. that 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 they're not good. The problem is that Cyber Ninjas, which is the outfit that's being used right now, has been criticized as well. Uh, it, it's been criticized by a guy who's done auditing for both yeah. Democrats and Republicans, and the Cyber Ninja head was. Uh, quoted uh, earlier before all this is saying that there had been uh, a, a lot of fraud, so there was a little bias there, and they're accusing him of being an amateur who really doesn't know what he's doing. I mean, even to the point where a reporter noticed that somebody was coming in to do the audit, and the the uh, the, the auditors had black pens, which of course could yeah, match well, the black okay. ink, and they should have switched right. already. Let me stop you. Right there. Okay, this is all BS. Okay. Okay. So first of all, on the audit floor. They did spot some blue and black pens. That was before ballots ever arrived. So this is more of the propaganda crap that's being spread by the leftist media. Black and blue pens were removed from the facility. It took all of about five minutes. They let everybody know here's why you have to have red and green pens. Okay. So let's talk about the so-called certification of people. Um, Cyber Ninjas is the manager of the audit process. Are they a participant? No doubt they are. But I want to be really clear. I'm in the House of Representatives. This is an all-Senate show. So I'm a, an observer here. I get information from the Senate that is, uh, shall we say, um, public information, but not a lot of people listen to it. Um, if you had the opportunity to watch the Senate hearing this afternoon at one o'clock uh, Pacific Daylight Time, um, the folks from uh, Cypher were able to explain that they have been accepted by both courts and Congress as expert witnesses. Um, and when, you, when you're looking at somebody who has the expertise to examine equipment, um, why did that? Because they're not auditors, they're service providers. Right. So if EAC is in the business of certifying labs, they're not in the business of certifying auditors. And it's rather disturbing to understand that, to find out that the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors don't appear to know the difference. 
Right. So at the end of the day, we've got an audit team that has been assembled with varying skill sets. And we've got one of the most <laughs> one of the most knowledgeable Democrats in the state of Arizona, John Brakey, mm -hmm. is a part of the audit team. He has been critical of Maricopa County for years, some of their sloppy practices, and now they're upset because they got found out. Okay, well, you've got Republicans. And you've got, and John's not the only one, you got Democrats who are all taking a look at this saying, we're finding things. But the letter that President Fan sent to the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors was not accusatory. It was informational. It's we are looking for certain information. Can you help us? Have they found anything? Not? I mean, other than the, these, you know, red herrings about bamboo. Yeah. So that's, has anything that been an found? Yeah, yeah. Nobody's even a fictitious right. invention. Yeah. By um, the uh, the leftist news media. Okay. That's not what they're looking for. Okay. What have In they found? Have they? Know. Do you know what they found? I mean, obviously, it's supposed to be secret. I imagine right now. Say. Oh, but is there something? Give me a wink. I'm not. A I can either confirm or deny. I, I, I have a question. It, it, it's first they said that the files were deleted. Then they said no. They you just don't know where to look for them. And I've tried to help my mom with her computer, <laughs> and I can't tell you how many times she told me she erased the hard drive. So here here's my question: Were those files deleted, or were they? Did they just not know where to look for them? I can neither confirm nor deny. Okay. 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 Look, I'm actually in favor. I'm in favor of this, and I think I'm in favor of for the same reason that a lot of Republicans are: is that we we want to put this to rest. I mean, if there is something to be found, no, no, and no, they no, find God, something, I don't, I don't know where you're getting that narrative, but that's crap. Why is the that? People in this state, the people in this state, want an audit, not to try and overturn something. They want to know what happened. They know intuitively. Right. That Why is that crap? Problems. Just saying that it would put it to rest to know the truth right now. And if the truth comes out where you have somebody who is actually pro Trump does the audit and you find out, I'm sorry, somehow people voted against Trump in this election in Maricopa County, then it should put it to rest. Right. Yeah. The, the whole propaganda line is that Republicans don't want to have this audit. And that's just not true. Not only do Republicans want it, Democrats want it as well, because they understand that we have an obligation as the legislative body of this state to prove or disprove whether or not something happened. If something happened, was it criminality or was it incompetence or did nothing happen? I mean, I will tell you, I'll be the first person to celebrate if the hand tabulation of the ballots matches the number that Dominion's equipment claimed was in the election. All right. So let me I ask you this. How much long. how much money you want to put on that it was not enough to uh, alter the election? I don't think I'd take that. Bet, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would love. I would love it to be overturned. That would be the great. It would be the greatest thing. I mean, look, we had Trafalgar. We had Trafalgar. Nobody believed Trafalgar in the polling. I believed him because I know I'm a secret Trump voter myself. I don't like to tell people that I voted for him except for these podcasts. Look, uh, Representative Fincham, we're spot on. We're gonna. He was totally spot on, and uh, you know Nate Silver and all the rest. You know, had egg all over their face. We're gonna come back with the next segment. Going to talk about uh, HR one and how the federal government wants to take over the vote in Arizona and other states. Could possibly go wrong with that. Nothing. <laughs> Perhaps the stupidest election-related story is currently taking place in Arizona, where Republicans have been trying to relitigate the presidential election by recounting all the ballots in the state's most populous county. This is yet another tally of the nearly 2.1 million ballots in Maricopa County. But this so-called audit is unlike any other. These are ballot counters heading into a shift. Have you ever done election counting before? No, but it's there's nothing to it. It's... It, 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 it's pretty obvious. Yeah, 
That's not reassuring. Normally, when a guy in those sunglasses says, there's nothing to it, it's pretty obvious. He's just seconds away from reversing his brand new ATV through the front window of a FUD ruckus. And for the record, this recount is a total joke. The audit company in charge, Cyber Ninjas, is owned by an advocate of the Stop the Steal movement. And obvious bias aside, the process alone seems pretty slipshod. Arizona Secretary of State has expressed alarm over accounts of ballots being left unattended and untrained workers using different rules to count ballots, all of which the audit's official Twitter account disputed as baseless claimies, which doesn't exactly fill you with confidence about their attention to detailees. And it is genuinely insane to swoop into a county that, remember, has already done multiple audits of its election count, finding no evidence of fraud. Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle on the... Weekly rap. I'm biased against John Oliver because of the British accent, so I, 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 I'll take the sunglasses. Here's the problem. We're joined uh, back for another segment by uh, Representative uh, Fincham of Arizona, and uh, here, here's one of the problems, though. It, it's you, know, you get people like Sidney Powell, who was like the head of this movement for a short time. She sued for libel, was it, by uh, Dominion, and her defense is that no reasonable person would believe her. Now, that doesn't inspire a lot of confidence in what she was saying, does it? I, frankly, I haven't been following anything other than our own uh, Good events answer. here in Arizona. Good answer. So, what do you, so how do you answer I, uh, John Oliver's uh, investigative journalism on HBO? Love Game of Thrones, by the way. Investigative yeah. journalism. I think that you're <laughs> taking great license with that term. Okay. Um, that sounds like a propaganda uh proponent who is spinning around in the parking lot, not quite sure what he's looking at because he doesn't even know what state he's in. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. Let's uh, switch gears just for a second. So uh, Congress uh, passed, no, Congress is just the House, right? Is that right? The House passed H.R. 1, which which sounds... H.R. 1 and F. Yeah. So they're mirror bills. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that sounds very impressive, but it basically would be the usurpation of uh, of uh, voting uh, by the federal government, taking over what the uh, states had uh, had always handled. And one of my favorite parts of it is that it mandates automated registration of people who apply for unemployment, Medicaid, Obamacare, and, and uh, college or are coming out of prison. And uh, the bill's authors expect this to register. They expect it to register non-citizens because they've created a safe harbor against prosecution of non-citizens who report that they have been erroneously registered. I got that from National Review, but that's funny because I mean, so they're admitting that they're going to have non-citizens <laughs> registering to vote, and they're going to try to protect them. Uh, that's just one of the sins of this bill. I think they could solve the border problem if we just mailed v- voter registrations to the people in Honduras. <laughs> Okay. Representative Fincham. Oh, wait a minute. There's an idea. If we mail them directly to the people all over the world who want to come here, then they can save money and we can save public funds on not having to pay for law enforcement to try and catch them. Well, that's called foreign aid, I guess. That's what we would be de facto foreign aid. <laughs> well, you know, the, the Democrats have been pushing this. We are a citizen of the world crap now for, what, five or six years? Oh, I can years? go back to Norman Cousins, I think. Uh, one world. Uh, it's probably on your bookshelf, uh, Norman Cousins' book. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that's... It. So they're going to wipe out uh, state laws allowing voters to be checked against a pre-existing list of registrations. You know, my favorite um, thing was the, the whole the animosity towards the Florida voting law. Uh, you're allowed to bring water to voters. It's just that it has to be for everybody, and you can't have somebody in an NRA T-shirt or in an Antifa T-shirt coming up to you because that's intimidation. What happened to uh, us uh honoring people's safe spaces like in college but in the voting line you can be harassed except uh when it's it, it favors uh, the other side well i can't come on on that but i will comment on hr1 okay if, if so hr1 is probably the uh that is the assembly of every possible fraud measure that Joe Biden and his team could think of. Now, don't forget, he's the one who said, we have assembled the best fraud team available. That's a little bit of license. But, okay, we'll take you at your word there, Joe. Um, The things that they are promoting here, uh, and I'm really glad that the, uh, I think it was the Indiana Attorney General, and he's got, I don't know, 21, 22, 23 
attorneys generals from around the country have already signed on to a, a letter notifying Congress that everything that you're proposing in here uh, is actually patently unconstitutional and we will fight you. Now, you mentioned the Secretary of State's race. One of the problems that we have here in Arizona is our Democrat Secretary of State has an appetite for entering into consent decrees from friendly lawsuits by leftists. She's made no bones about it. In fact, she's rather proud of it. She's even uh, become, I think, a, a, I don't know if she's a paid contributor on MSNBC or not, but she's on there enough to probably draw a paycheck. At the end <laughs> of the day, you know, we've, we've got Democrats here in the Arizona House keep telling us, and, and the Senate for that matter, keep telling, reminding us that, you know, there's this thing called the Supremacy Clause. I'm pretty sure that they don't really know what it says, but it sounds really cool when they say it on the floor. Well, if that's the case, if you're going to tell us that the U.S., the, the federal government can come into Arizona and dictate how election law is going to be done, well, then we'll just take action to nullify it. Well, you can't do that because of the supremacy clause. Really? If that's the case, then we're going to overturn your uh, legalized marijuana law. Exactly. Exactly. The moment you say that, they run scared. Well, everybody's in so, favor of states' rights, uh, you know, until they're against it. So until it's what a code for racism. Me. Yes. I am right. so what I am me I am about this is Cass Sunstein's idea of nudging people. And this is how propaganda is introduced to people. They introduce HR one and it's, you know, the federal government needs we need to federalize the election so that they'll be fair and free. What could possibly go wrong with that? But they know that it's not going to pass, or if it does pass in the House, it won't pass in the Senate, and they'll they'll kind of puddle around with this thing until one day they really want to strike. And I think that the states and the state attorney generals have got the uh, we've got the upper hand in this. They can do what they can try to do what they want to do, but at the end of the day, it's the legislatures who have the real power. It's not Congress on but, that matter. But you know, here's the thing: just uh, you know, looking at the cultural trends, uh, it this is just a. a, a a, a constant fight, and I think the progressive side is winning this. Everything from uh, Obergefell uh, to, and although you, apparently Roe versus Wade <laughs> could be uh, <laughs> on the docket uh, pretty soon, which would be quite interesting. But uh, but it is. It, it just seems that way. I mean, look at Arizona for crying out loud. That's the place where all the snowbirds went, and they kept it Republican with Barry Goldwater, and now all of a sudden they may have actually voted for Joe Biden for president notwithstanding this audit. Yeah. It, it didn't, didn't happen. happen. <laughs> I am so... And, and here's, why, I am, here's why we know it didn't happen, all right? And it's it's why it's intuitively... It, it's nonsense intuitively. Leading up to the election, uh, this would be August, September, October, it first started off that you'd see a Trump train of maybe a dozen cars. And this is in my community, okay? It's, it's one community, but I think it's fairly representative of Arizona. You'd see a Trump train of maybe a dozen cars. There's and Biden the trains Saturday, behind gas see... stations now. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm sorry. Biden trains are behind gas, gas stations, stations right now. now. You stepped yeah. on his great joke. <laughs> Tim, that was good. Usually that was, we're going to have it run in the crawl, Tim. It's going to be fine. The following weekend, you'd see 24 cars. And then the weekend right. after that, you'd see 48 cars. I mean, when, when we led up to immediate the weekend before the election, a three mile long traverse of vehicles down Oracle Road in Oral Valley, Arizona. Do you know what we saw for Joe Biden? A couple of hippies standing on one corner with a three by four sign waving it. Look, there's we didn't two, even there's, see there's, yard there's, signs out. There's two sides of the coin. So, so you have sure. Trafalgar who showed that there were all these secret Trump voters who didn't show themselves, okay? There were also. The Biden voters, there was only one electric character in this election, and that was Donald Trump. And the vote was a referendum on Donald Trump. And there are a lot of people, trust me, I travel in those circles. There are a lot of people who absolutely hate Donald Trump. That's why it was a surprise. He actually did well in the inner city. I mean, he did a lot better than Republicans usually do. But those suburban women, and trust me, I want those suburban women to have their daughters 
be on a soccer team and have a transgender uh, play against them and knock them right out of the game. I mean, that's what uh, that's that's they'll deserve that. But that's but that's the thing they hate it. So I think your in- intuition, I think if I might say, you're not a woman and you don't have intuition. There you go. Well, okay, I'm not a woman, <laughs> but I do have intuition. Okay, and we also have data, and the the whole suburban soccer mom thing. It's not validatable because the suburban soccer moms we're talking to, and I've got to believe that they're representative of our communities. They're telling us, no, I voted for Trump because I I couldn't bear the thought of what Joe Biden might do to this country. The problem with conspiracies is, I mean, you've you've got to have a mass, the evidence, I mean, we'll see what the audit shows. But uh, you got to have a lot of people involved in stuff like this. And, oh, is that the uh, is that the line? <laughs> is that the gas line or the Trump line? Guess that line. That to me sounds like a Trump uh, Trump line with horns. There you I like go. The, I like the line about the Biden gas line. There we go. There we go. All right, you can use that. We're going to give that to you. You can use that in your race for Secretary of State. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate this, uh, State Representative Fincham. Good luck to you. Thank you so much. Well, if people want to know more about me, they can visit votefincham.com. There we go. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. And we won't step on your line anymore, Tim. As a matter of <laughs> fact, the camera will be on you and not on me. It we'll come back with line. another segment. <laughs> and it's Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle. Should I put the knock before the Slagle or afterwards? Well... We'll figure, we'll we'll figure it out in post production we'll uh, on the weekly wrap, and I just want to put a bow on our two part discussion with the state representative who I originally introduced as a congressman, but he's actually a state rep. Uh, very nice guy talking to him just before Mark Fincham of Arizona. I was expecting some crazy guy because you know, he's, <laughs> he's a Trump voter, uh, but he believes that the election was stolen. And uh, he and we, shocked you like Mike Lindell. Well, right. Mike Lindell acquitted himself rather well with uh, Jim, Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought he would be. And uh, this guy, we're interviewing him, and I think he was in his rec room or uh, his, his basement, and he had a bunch of books in the back. And uh, before we had him on, I asked him to, to, to warm him up to just take some of the books out. And you know, I was hoping for, like, one of the great books of the Western world, you know, Sophocles or Aristotle. Yes, The Wealth of Nations, something like that. Instead, uh, what was the uh, list of books that he had there? They, um, I wasn't there for that segment. You weren't. Right, right, right. <laughs> I think I was afraid that one of them was going to be Mein Kampf. But it wasn't. Uh, no, the guy didn't come off as a crazy. Uh, it's difficult. It's an uphill climb uh, that they're going to have in Arizona. I'd, and as I say, I'd love nothing more than to see this. Uh, this election overturned. In any event, what I uh, what I, I am yeah. so I am I, I, I tried to get this in. I I am so in favor of voter ID. I cannot tell you yeah. how, you know, people say, well, it's going to be hard. It's another it's another hurdle that you have to pass in order to vote. There are no hurdles to pass. <laughs> exactly. That's I want hurdles. You know, that's, that's my thing. I want anyone that's going to vote to have to spend three hours at the Department of Motor Vehicles. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's that, a privilege, not a right. That's my view. <laughs> and, and I'm very old school. It's like, it's like if you're not willing to do this to vote, at one point I had joked that we ought to be able to vote for president while we're voting on American Idol uh, on, on, <laughs> online, just to have the president, the presidential race at the same time. No, I mean, it's horrible. And there have been studies that show that there is no voter suppression because if the people are interested in the election, they're coming out to vote, vote. And there's, there really hasn't been any, any suppression, but the Democrats. No, but that's what they want. I think some people want that. I think some people would like, uh, okay, uh, we're opening the phone lines now. Uh, Dial, if you, if you want Donald Trump, dial 1-800. And if you want, uh... (laughs) (laughs) that would be the easiest. And we would get uh, what we deserve. President Kardashian. Sure, (laughs) sure. So uh, switching gears just here for a moment, uh, you know, I try to, uh, on every show, rip my former employer, uh, Channel 5, (laughs) because they didn't want want me. Uh, Actually, they were right not to want me. I'm, uh, you know, I know the great books of the Western world. Uh, They're they're (laughs) Channel 5, news, weather, traffic. Uh, What do you need traffic for? I was traffic reporter for them 
what do you need it for? Nobody has a TV set in their car. And even if now, uh, you certainly don't need it uh, at all because you've got the GPS. So, so they're, they're, they're obsolete, and I'd like to kick somebody who's down. So let's go to this report. <laughs> I actually know Marion Brooks. I really like her. Let's go to the intro on this report that she uh, had on Channel 5 in their race segment. Oh, yes. And the recent protests nationwide have put the spotlight on systemic racism in America. George Floyd's tragic interaction with police has also demonstrated the importance of a conversation that is happening in many black homes. NBC 5's Christian Farr continues our Race in Chicago series with a story about something that is simply called the talk. And this is simply the called The talk bias. really is oh, a we survival need, No, we don't need that. Part. While there seems to be an acknowledgment. No, well, that's okay. We'll, we'll get to that, that part. Um, sorry about that. The, uh, did, you, did you notice she just said systemic racism as if it's a given? Yeah. It's not like alleged. There's sure. an issue in this country whether systemic racism actually exists, but she just said it. Oh, systemic racism. It's there. And no, then, it's not necessarily there. And if you're a journalist, you got to give both sides, whether, whether there is or there isn't. But they just say that it's there because Lester Holt, the head, you know, who's like her boss, I think she has to genuflect before uh, Lester Holt. <laughs> Lester Dolt, I like to call him. He, he said recently, you know, we don't have to give all the sides of stories anymore, especially if it's crazy. You don't have to say that the sun rose in the east. Well, this is not a given like the sun rising in the east. This is contentious. And if you're a journalist, you don't say automatically say that there's something called systemic racism. And uh, the, the whole thing about the George Floyd uh, uh, tragedy, there, there was... there's. We're, Aside from the, the, the guy with the knee being white and the neck being black, what is the evidence that there was anything racial? There was nothing that? racial. And Keith Ellison, who's one of the most radical people in the country and is the attorney general of Minnesota, would have alleged racism. Hey, they threw in the kitchen sink. They had two <laughs> counts of murder, <laughs> which I, I still don't get. It. Well, the jury was out for four hours on that. Four hours they were out. The judge had let them off for the weekend because he knew that it was going to be very, very complicated. Come, No, it wasn't. They'd already decided, <laughs> Judge, we don't need the weekend off. We don't need it. We, we, we can convict them right now. Yeah, well, well they could hear, the, they could hear the, the, the lighters flicking in the streets. Of Minneapolis. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no uh, intimidation whatsoever. But here's the thing. So, the, so she intros this story done by Christian Farr. And he, this was what ticked me off because I saw that he was nominated for a Lissagor Award. You know what a Lissagor Award is? It's, it should be called the Liberal Awards. I mean, they're journalism awards named for Peter Lissagor. And they are so biased. It's ridiculous. So this Christian Farr did not win a Lissiger for this, but he did win for, like, best news personality. Uh, and he does this story about the talk. You know what the talk is. Yeah. Right. So we, we know it's the you know, black fathers give it to their sons. Don't... Uh, don't bring a knife out when, when the police stop you. Something like that. I think they should play that, that, that Chris Rock, that Chris Rock clip. It, it's, it's how not to get beat by the police. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that should be, you know, de rigueur in, uh, in, in the schools. Anyway, he does this report, and it's like 3 minutes and 36 seconds, and it's all about uh, you know, the talk and how you got to watch out for the police, and it mentions George Floyd. It's all part of this systemic racism that she introduced the uh, piece as. And then finally, I think it's about the 310 mark. You get, okay, the obligatory other side of the story for 10 seconds wrapped and then a rebuttal after that. So here it is. The talk really is a survival lesson. And while there seems to be an acknowledgement of systemic racism in this country, Dr. Towns says there is pushback from those who do not believe it exists. We've had the first black president. We've had these sort of monumental sort of achievements, yet we somehow still seem to slide back. And so the talk becomes incredibly important. So here's the problem. That's not the other side of the story. Yeah, part of it is that, yeah, we... Hey, we elected Obama. Uh, does that mean we're, we don't have systemic racism? But if you really wanted to get into police action whatsoever, you would have had something like, and something that would have been worthy of an award, not this the dumb Lissagor, you would have had something like, well, did you know that Professor Roland Fryer, who's black and as a Harvard economics professor, found that the police do not employ lethal force disproportionately against black people? Do not do that. And then he did say, well, I, but I think my research shows that they do employ non-lethal force disproportionately against black. Uh, and he, he 
uh, inferred from that that the the cops know that they can't get away with murdering black people because that, every single one of those will be on television nationally, but they can get a, away with roughing up black kids and whatever. Uh, and that, and he said, and that's why you have the talk. Okay, so this would have fit right in here. The pro- Then, of course, you know Heather McDonald. She wrote The War on, on Cops, and she's very pro-police. She sent an email to Professor Fryer, and she said, in your research, did you, uh, of non-lethal force used on blacks, did you uh, itemize and account for uh, the use, uh, the uh, the resistance by uh, the perpetrators in any of these incidents? Were, were they resisting arrest? And he said, no. Well, that's a big no, because if you don't show, if, if you have people resisting, of course there's going to be force used by the police. The question would be whether it was excessive force, and there is no data that shows that they have disproportionately used excessive force. But you'd have to have all that stuff in this piece to show that basically there isn't systemic racism <laughs> by the cops, which we have accepted as a given right at the beginning of this piece. And there, this is journalism? I mean, I can understand you having a side to this. This is why I said you know we should have Tim Scott as the president of the United States, because he actually was stopped by the cops about seven times in his life, and he wasn't a perpetrator. So it does happen to happen, but it's, uh, it's not part of a systemic thing in, in society. And how, how, do, how do we fight all this? I, 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 just, I just don't get it. I have, I have no idea because it's uh, people that are opposed to it are, are, are considered loony. They're considered, you know, denialists, white supremacists. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, uh, here for a commentary on this, a quick commentary we have. We, you know, we talked to Joan Esposito uh, last time, and I thought, why don't we have Dick Kay on? Because he's also from Channel 5, WCPT, uh, like Joan. Let's have him on. And we tried to get him on, and the problem was he died. Whistled. He died. He died last week. Okay, but we have this This podcast can get anybody. We have the ghost of Dick <laughs> Kay on with us right now. Dick, do, are you eeny beeny chilly weeny? The spirits are about to speak. Are you there, Dick? Bruce, 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 are you there? Yes, I am here, but you are not. It's very, it's dark. It, it's very dark. How is it in purgatory right now? You're, you're suggesting purgatory. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that that Marion Brooks uh, piece was uh, objective and good journalism, Dick? Well, Bruce, this reminds me of uh, an old talk I had with Harold Washington. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you know? Uh, uh, you know he was he was the uh, first black mayor of of Chicago. I do know that. Oh, oh. Do you, uh, Wasn't Eugene Sawyer the mayor before him? I'm not, let, let's not get bogged down in details. I mean, you're, two days count. Heaven, heaven can wait. Let's go ahead. Well, when I was talking with Harold, he told me once, these are dramatic pauses, yeah. he told me once <laughs> that, uh, that he didn't have to have a talk with his kid. That's oh, it. That's really? <laughs> he didn't have to have a talk with <laughs> his kid. There you go. Well, thanks uh, for giving the rebuttal. Uh, well, I, I don't know if that's quite the rebuttal, but... Uh, no, I appreciate that. If I may, do you remember Ed Verdoliak as well? Sweaty Eddie, Tenth yeah. Ward. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, he once told me. Yes, that uh, he had to have a talk with his kid. Why? You don't know why? Because his father was a crook. It wasn't. It was, <laughs> you figured it was how to evade the police. And how there, to the police. <laughs> there we go. Hi, yo. Thank you, the late Dick K. Oh, we get the scoops. Oh, we man. get the interviews right here. Hi, I'm Bruce Wolf, and this is my world. Remember when you could go to the ballpark and watch Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa hit them out during batting practice? Well, McGuire has retired, and Sammy can't be trusted. Well, this week, you could have gone to Olympia Fields and seen a murderer's row of golf talent hitting him where you ain't ever going to. And sure, people watch for the aesthetic pleasure, but there's a practical side, too. We all think we're going to learn something by watching their swings. Gee, I wonder if Tiger thinks the same swing thought I do. Pull the blinds down, then whoosh, extension, not tension. Don't forget the finish. Park the car in the garage, Gary Player once said. Hold the club like a bird. All those images turn the golf swing into a picture puzzle for us. But these guys, they don't look like they're thinking of anything. They're just doing it. Oh, well, if I can't learn any golf by watching them, maybe I can learn golf announcing. I feel like, where's Waldo? And I am Waldo in this picture. This is the old, uh, I'm going to have uh, milk pour out of the newspaper trick that Steve Williams <laughs> does uh, very well. And uh, Tiger finds much delight in I will now yell, you to man, in the middle of Tiger's backswing, Patrick. You to man. All right, Tiger, only uh, one more shot here. Other people would like a chance, please. 
if Woody Allen ever remakes Zelig, he can use that tape. But I think Tom Watson would rather have Gary McCord back announcing the Masters than me. I'm Bruce Wolf. And uh, I am Bruce Wolf. <laughs> Ow. I've knocked my, my fingers are hurting. Along with Tim Slagle on the Weekly Rep. For those who are just listening to this, the visually impaired, I was actually standing behind Tiger yeah, Woods that was, that was at funny. that time. And he did not hear me. Uh, I actually have interviewed him a couple of times. And uh, I, his wife took a three iron to me. No, I no, it was, it was it was fine. So that's a little bit about me. Basically, I'm doing the same da- darn. Boy, I, I talk awfully fast. He's actually got yeah. he's actually got a three yeah. iron for one of his legs now, doesn't he? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or uh, he had that three iron inexplicably uh, pressing on the accelerator going downhill at 50 miles an hour. Nobody really knows what exactly was going on with Tiger. I think he just wanted to beg out of the Masters. He didn't want to play. Uh, I don't. I don't have any game. So we know all about me tim what about you who the heck are you i'm uh i'm a comedian i moved to chicago in 1986 to become a star yeah and uh <laughs> what happened when that didn't pan out uh, yeah, then yeah. i ended up on the <laughs> weekly rap exactly <laughs> so well so did i so did i um yeah i mean the com i mean uh, to me stand-up comedy is frightening as i said in our last show i wanted donald trump to um to pardon Louis C.K. because he's just so sure. important to uh, America. Sure. He hurt yeah. no one but himself. Yeah. Speaking of pardons, yeah, I was wondering what, what Rod Blagojevich is doing right now. Remember he was supposed to be – we didn't mention this on the last show, did he we? He has a podcast. He has a podcast? Yeah. yeah I, Lightning Rod. Remember when he got out of jail, it was going to be – uh, and I'm always grateful to Bogoyevich because every time I pass through the uh, an iPass thing, I still think the sign should say courtesy of Rod Blagojevich and that script handwriting, which went across the entire span of the toilet because he's got such a long name. <laughs> but he gets out of jail and he thinks he's going to be uh, – he's, he's going to arrive. He's going to get a, mornings on WLS or, or whatever. And then the pandemic hits and he, he – I yeah. think he's the probably the biggest victim. Bruce, I'm the basic, biggest victim of the pandemic. I still really. remember the day he uh, the day he resigned for governor. I, I was on the tollway, and they were already pulling those signs <laughs> down. They had those signs <laughs> down within an hour. <laughs> And it's, but they can't fix a pothole. <laughs> it takes them all summer to fix a pothole. What I what I loved was his farewell, and he, he couldn't say goodbye. So he had this farewell press conference, and God bless Chuck Gowdy of Channel 7, because he goes up to Patty. Her husband is going away, ostensibly for, what, 14 years. I think, what was that? Was that the sentence? I can't remember. Judge, Judge Zagel wanted to give him life. But... but um, Pam Zeckman's uh, ex-husband, by the way, yeah, little known uh, huh. fact. So, uh, so he goes up to Patty and he says, "Will you wait for him?" Which I thought was the, <laughs> which I thought was the, I I always thought I was a shock jock, but Chuck Gowdy, straight faced, asking that it was in such bad taste. Will you wait for him? And Patty, by the way, looked fetching, absolutely uh-huh. fetching for the sentencing. Oh my God. She killed. It didn't help him at all. But but anyway, but Rod, he has his last press conference, and he didn't want it to end because he's going to jail after this. And he kept it going. And we were pay, playing the uh, pap smear drinking game during it because every time that he mentioned that he had provided pap smears for the women of the state of <laughs> Illinois, we, we hoisted one uh, in honor of Rod. And he must have said it about oh, ten times. Pap blue uh, ribbon smears. There, there we go. There we go. But he was... So I, I feel sorry because he was the greatest victim of. Um, did the did the pandemic hurt the uh, the comedy club circuit? Oh God, yeah, a lot of clubs, a lot of clubs closed. A lot of. I mean, uh, are you still doing? Were you still yeah. doing it? So well, yeah, I didn't. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I'm not gonna. I got it. It's all I know. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, <laughs> is it tough to do a Zoom? Is it tough to do a Zoom uh, yeah, comedy I, sketch? Yeah, I tried to. I tried to do the Zoom shows. I just mm-hmm. did not like. But them. It's, it's hard like... to get the hecklers uh, interested. <laughs> well, it's yeah. not just that. It's it, it, it's the acoustics of a comedy club are really important right. to, to how you and the you know the laughter coming back to to, to yeah. where you hit the punchlines or how long you take the pauses. It's like it's like drawing a bow on a violin. Yes. And it's like the Zoom shows is like trying to p- play a symphony on a Casio. <laughs> now, I've stood in front of crowds like intro comics, whatever, and you can't really. S- can you see the audience? You can uh, see. You can usually see if if the show is yeah. lit correctly. Oh, okay. You can see like the first row of tables right in front of you, right in front mm-hmm. of the stage, and that becomes that's like your studio audience. Is you play okay. to those people, 
And uh, if you get them laughing, then the rest of the crowd, the home audience, which is the people sitting up beyond the lights, know that, that that's... Uh, that, that that's the cue. It's is there anything more boring than what we're talking about right now? And not actually probably, telling jokes? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you suck! <laughs> Don't give me your theory of comedy! Oh, Chris, can my. I ask you a question? Yes. I first heard you on Brandmeier's show, I believe. Mm -hmm. Is that how you got your start? How did you get your start? No, how I gave you... Johnny his start. Okay? okay, and I love that. <laughs> no, you know what? Johnny's first broadcast was from my law office. Okay. Now the world goes totally around. I'm back as a lawyer now in an even smaller office, uh, my upstairs bedroom. But uh, because you can do that via Zoom. But um, no, I, I was at uh, the loop before Johnny. They, I was one of the pieces in place there, but then, but then he came there. I mean, I had a rich and storied history. I did a thing called Athletes Feats on WXRT, and this is how long ago that was. After I did it, Bob Verdi of the Tribune did it for 20 years, and he hasn't done it in 20 years. So that's how long ago I did Athletes Feats. On, what was uh, Athletes Feats? Is this... it, it was just like a two-minute, twice a week. Well, they, they, it got up to like five days a week. I would do, uh, I mean, I was on with Terry Hemmert when she was a baby. So what okay. does Terry Hemmert know about sports? Does she know more than Tim Slagle? I guess the, that's the here's, here's the thing. I have always fit in well with people who don't know anything about sports because I know <laughs> this much more than they do. Maybe, that's women's, all. maybe woman's softball. She looks like she's played a little woman's softball. All right. Uh, you want to go there, man? Okay. I mean, you, know, uh, you, you think we're going to overturn Obergefell? We're not. Okay. Go, get with the culture. All right. There you go. All right. So that's a little bit, you know. So XRT, pardon me, XRT, mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't remember that at all. So you were there before Johnny. Who were you on with at the Loop? Uh, I was on with, well, Buzz Kilman one time on a Friday. I popped Chet 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 on him. I had done it. I had I'd actually originated it on WXRT because I had was substituting as the news person right before I became a lawyer because Marge Halperin was on pregnancy leave, and they let me do the news. Well, the news used to lead into the sports. Well, I couldn't lead into myself because that's masturbatory, right? Uh, now with the sports is me. Mm -hmm. So I said, now with the sports, here's Chet Chit Chet. And then I did The Voice, which I did at about, I'd say, like 33 and a third compared to the 78 that you hear me talk. That's when I, when I started doing it. So I originated it back there. Um, but I was inspired by Steve Dahl and Gary Meyer because they used to ridicule Chuck Swirsky. Because everything was the bottom line. Everything was the bottom line. And I, I turned it into the lobotomy line. And so, and the rest is history. And I am history. So, yeah. yeah <laughs> Literally. No, right. Literally history. Yes, yes. But you were back on XRT when they, the music they're playing now was new music. Oh, now X, XRT, X, here's, here's what's wrong with XRT. Yeah, right, absolutely. XRT, and they, they, they've gotten old because... I, I know the program director of XRT. It's, it's uh, Greg Salk. He used to be my boss when he was like 19 years old at the Loop, and now he's about 100. But he said, uh, I, I told him uh, we were playing golf last year, and I said, there's something wrong with XRT because I can listen to the music. And uh, <laughs> I, back then it was, oh, they, they used to have, a, they had a fight years ago. Uh, what, uh, this is, you know, like 40 years ago. They, they had a fight because they went to automated commercials. They wanted to have, the staff just sure. read them, and they didn't want, God forbid, Coca-Cola should drop a million dollars in advertising on, oh, it's wrecking us. Uh, <laughs> yes, we're not pure anymore. Did you ever w see the movie FM? I, I know of it. Yes, yes. No, that's, and it that's was kind just, of the concept of it is oh. the corporate suits wanted them to uh, yes. have a playlist. Right, right. <laughs> so, and and the, the, I mean, the notion that, and they felt like they were sellouts yep. once they did that. And I, and of course they, what the funny thing is is that it's basically a radical uh, radio station. And here am I. I was conservative back then, too, but I was doing the sports. So, But you always had to be careful. And I've always had to be careful wherever I've worked because they're all basically – like I work for Fox, and everybody thinks, oh, Fox, it's you know, conservative. Not Fox local. No. Fox local in the higher – in. It, it, the national network used to call the Fox Chicago station the gay station because there were so many <laughs> gay people in charge. And it was, it was, it was, you know, it, it was, uh, I mean, that, I, I don't want to stereotype it as that, but it certainly wasn't the conservative right. station. And so you always had to be careful. When I went to Channel 5, here's one thing that happened to me on Channel 5. I'm, um, I'm doing the sports in 2008 and Vinny Del Negro 
is uh, going to uh, become the coach of the Bulls. And there was a lot of criticism because they said that he didn't have any uh, head coaching or executive experience. And this is right when the campaign is going on between McCain and Obama for president. And I say, well, it doesn't, doesn't matter that he doesn't have any executive pre- uh, experience. We're about to elect a president who has no executive experience. And I immediately get a, something on my computer from the news director saying, watch it, Obama. And I retort, hey, McCain doesn't have executive experience either. But I get it, because all we cared about was alienating Obama voters, because that's Channel 5 that is so biased that it, why don't they want me anymore? Why don't they want me? I want to say boom shakalaka and ding dong dilly of a dinger when home runs are hit. Yes. But enough about me, more about we. So it's I have one question that, for Tim as well. Yes, there we go. Tim, comedian, and then... You become a contributing editor at Liberty Magazine. You're a self-described libertarian. How does that happen? Um, I was at. I, I, I would do a lot of uh, libertarian events. I would do uh, 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 go around doing state conventions, national conventions, fundraisers, and that for the Libertarian Party. And I met the editor from Liberty, and uh, he said, "You should write for me." And uh, and I, he goes, "I don't have money." But I'll make no. you a contributing editor. No, there you go. <laughs> so oh, there you, there the you title go. was the currency. <laughs> yeah, exa- exactly. So how, how do you get looped into the libertarian circuit? Um, you think there'd be money to make? It's free market. You're worth a lot. Uh, well, there's no, there's the, the, they don't have a lot of money. How do they have enough money because they've established themselves to be a political party that is on the ballot every presidential election in every state, right? Yeah, that's where all their money goes. Oh. <laughs> they, 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 they actually manage to get, yeah, it's, it's amazing. The ballot drive, the volunteers, they're great at getting on the ballot. And uh, uh, that's, that's hey, Chris, about you, it. You, you make it sound like, oh, you, know, you should have money because you believe in capitalism and everything. The capitalists are, are, are theorists. I mean, do you think Adam Smith had a lot of money? And capitalists themselves, of course, don't believe in capitalism. They believe in cronyism. <laughs> they, yeah. just, they're just uh, yeah. beneficiaries of uh, what our system is. Exactly. It's Thomas Jefferson like, like, was almost a pauper by the time he died. Right. He, he, was, he almost went bankrupt. He couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't make a, you know, any money that he didn't inherit. It's, uh, well, they didn't have autograph booths. You know, I'll sign your <laughs> Declaration of Independence right here for six bucks. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, out, uh, but outside of the, you know, the weed smoking wing of the Libertarian Party, which was its own thing, it's made up of, you know, I don't want to say greedy businessmen, but that's a lot of the, 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 the another faction. So there's money in there. There's a reason that they have a. And there's a reason they have money because they're party. greedy and they don't want to give it to the guy. <laughs> 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 when he does his stand up at an event, I want him paid, Bruce. I want him paid. <laughs> I do too. I want him paid. Absolutely. All right. That's uh, our bonus block on. I, I can't even knock anymore. My <laughs> knuckles are sore. On the weekly wrap with Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle.